Hello and welcome to another Betfred Sports video right here in the Quest Media Network studio. Now, there was lots of exciting football action at the weekend and of course, we always start in the Premier League, so we will do today. Now, on Saturday evening, it ended Everton 0, Manchester City 1. However, were Everton denied uh, a point on the afternoon? What do you think, Peter? Well, I thought City were remarkably lucky to uh, come away with three points there. Uh, Everton put up a tremendous uh, dogfight, as as kind of Everton uh, traditionally can do. Uh, and they certainly turned out all the stops on uh, against City at Goodison. Um, but I thought City edged it, you know, in terms of yeah. possession and better players, etc. Foden's goal was a, a little unfortunate side. Then there was the um, penalty um, uh, appeal. Yeah, now, before we started recording, me and Peter were talking about this, and I am, for one, certain that was a penalty. He's used his arm, that should be classed as a penalty. Peter disagrees. Peter, why do you disagree? Well, it's, um, the, it's where the T-shirt or a short sleeve shirt would finish, and I think the ball hit directly on that particular point, and that means that the referee didn't give it. He thought he just went for the ball, and maybe he was trying to get it on his chest. Um, but if it did, if it was below that, like near the elbow, then mm -hmm. it would definitely have been a penalty. But it was on the, the mark where your short sleeve shirt finishes, and that is the the the, the uh, uh, defining point of the of the arm. Um, and then it's got to be a clear and obvious error. So if it had been there, and the ref had to give it, mm -hmm. it would have been a penalty. They would have, uh, Cavana, who was uh, doing the uh, VDR, he would have. Um, sussed that and yeah. said it was a clear error but it wasn't it was exactly square on there so it could have gone either way yeah i understand your point but there's no consistency in the rule i mean if you go back throughout this season you've seen handballs given for much much less haven't you so it's about that consistency for me and in my opinion get rid of it next season get rid of our well i agree with that i mean i think it, they should just stick to the goal line technology uh, that's the most important thing I think it hasn't helped the game in terms of offside in particular um, because you, 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 the Liverpool goal um, in uh, normal time against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup final mm -hmm. I thought that was it I mean I kept looking at it thinking well I've managed to rule that off for offside yeah. it was incredibly close um, and I think that you should just let the referees get on with it. It's supposed to be brought in to stop all the debate on yeah. the referees' decisions, but it's it sparked the debate. It's yeah. created an even more uh, tranche of uh, ridiculous opinion. You go back about um, even 20, 30 years, the referee never got a mention. Yeah. Now the personalities in their own right, and you've got fans saying, oh, he gave this and he gave that, he didn't give this. Well, just forget it, they're just mm. doing the best. Yeah. I mean, I get it every weekend when yep. I'm refereeing myself. You're just trying your best. Mm. To do. And sometimes you're going to get it wrong. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to go the whole game and get everything right. But those are very, very rare. Yeah. I mean, we're just basically human beings doing our best. Well, you've just mentioned it then. Human error is part of the game, always has been and always will be. I, for one, want VAR to go. But looking at that result, that now opens up a six-point gap at the top of the table. City, of course, leading and then trailing closely behind in second are Liverpool. And, of course, Liverpool, nine times... Carabao Cup champions, or if you want to call it the League Cup, we'll stick with that. But yeah, nine times they've now won it after beating Chelsea 11 10 on penalties. Peter, of course, the big controversial point of that was uh, Kepa coming on for Mendy. What is going on there? Well, I just think he's too clever for his own good there. I mean, if Mendy had had such a fantastic performance, and then um, he must have been furious to be brought off of the penalties yeah. at the end. Um, before that game, Betfred had um, Liverpool eighty to one for the quad. <laughs> so, it, I mean that, that it's not eighty one now because yep. they won that game. But it is interesting that um, Liverpool fans are piling on that. Um, over three thousand supporters right. um, are on, were on that before the kickoff. So we're going to be paying out a fortune if uh, <laughs> if Liverpool do achieve the quad. Yeah. Um, the Premier League outright now with City, as you say, going six points clear. Betfred have um, City one to four. Uh, we've already paid out, of course, but we're still betting on it. Um, Liverpool 11 to four to, to win the league outright. And for the top four finish, um, and I know you'll come on to United in a minute, but United are now, they slip to third favourites for a top four finish behind Chelsea, who mm. one to 40. Um, Arsenal, who are five to six. United two to one with Betfred for a top four finish. Spurs ten to three, um, and 
they must be the most inconsistent time of yeah, all, yeah. inconsistent team of all time. Uh, they're ten to three. Uh, West Ham twelve to one. Wolves. A lot of people still fancy Wolves twenty five to one. Excellent stuff. As Peter said, then Tottenham so inconsistent, but they did beat Leeds United 4-0 at Ellen Road on Saturday at midday. And of course, that marked the end of Marcelo Bielsa's reign in charge of Leeds United. Uh, obviously, unfortunate for him. He's done major things with Leeds over the years. He's brought them from the Championship back to the Premier League after a 16-year absence from the top flight. So, just very quickly, what did you make of his impact or do you think he was overrated as a manager? No, I don't think he's overrated. I mean, uh, Guardiola and some of the other top managers in the country rate him highly. He doesn't. He seems a, a bit stubborn in his <laughs> approach. Um, he missed out with um, on the injury front um, with some of his top players, and that he didn't really change his style. In no. I mean, it's a ruthless league, the Premier League. And if you've lost three or four of your top players, you really have got to start thinking about well, should we just go for a draw here or yeah. let's keep it the, the score down? But Every single game he sort of went for it. The, def the defence is poor. Um, I see they're, they're going to bring in this American guy now, aren't they? Yeah. Um, Jesse Marsh to uh, take over. He looks uh, a boy. He's odds on with that for to be uh, to get the, the nod even today. I was going to say, do you not think that's just a ploy from the owners maybe to market themselves in America to an American audience? Because it seems a bit of a uh, not a silly decision, but you've got to question that one, haven't well, you? Well, he's been lined up for some time now. Right. Um, he's he, he was expected to be taking over uh, at the end of the season. Um, but Liverpool, I'm sorry, Leeds have reinvented themselves there. They've definitely reinvented themselves. Mm. Now, from being one of the most hated teams of years gone by, they're now one of the most popular with their expansive um, football. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one of Leeds' heavy losses came against Manchester United, not last weekend, but the weekend before in the 4-2 defeat at Ellen Road. But looking at Manchester United you'd think they'd be able to improve on a performance like that, take it into a home fixture. However, they were held to a nil-all draw against Watford at Old Trafford. Peter, there's not much to say about this one apart from United. So inconsistent. Well, it was sort of written in the stars, wasn't it? Watford battling for the lads at the bottom of the table. Um, United um, on the back of quite a good week, you know, winning in Europe, or drawing in Europe and winning at Leeds. Um, would be expected to have got the three points there. Yep. But they just couldn't hit the target, could they? Um, Ronaldo seems to be struggling of late. Yeah. Um, he seems to have the weight of the world on his shoulders instead of just relaxing and getting on with it. Um, and they, they just couldn't score. The possession was extraordinary. The number of shots they had, 20-odd shots, couldn't get the ball in the back of the onion bag. Um, and now we've got the, the derby coming up yep. um, on Sunday. Um, Betfred have City predictably two to five favourites to um, pick up three points on Sunday at the Etihad. United eight to one, um, and we've got some of the goals, first goal scorer bets here. Um, I was making some notes before because the trainers only just started getting them together. But Ronaldo is nine to one to score the first goal. Sancho sixteen to one. Rashford fourteen to one, and Fernandez twelve to one. But um, City. Um, outright favourites in odds on to, to win the game. They've got Sterling four to one to score first, De Bruyne six to one, um, Foden four to one and Na uh, uh, Mares is five to one. Um, the most popular score line bet is City to win three one, which is available at Betfred at eleven to one. There we go. If you do fancy Cristiano Ronaldo to find the back of the net once again, he has been priced at 9-1 to one to score the first goal. Well, City do return to action on Tuesday night in the FA Cup fifth round. They make the journey to Peterborough United. Peterborough, rock bottom of the championship, look destined to return to League One. They're priced at 28-1. to one. The draw is 9-1 to one. and, of course, City entering as clear favourites. They are 1-10. to 10. Peter, very quickly, City, this will be a walkover for them. Yeah, and I hope that uh, Guardiola takes the opportunity to put some of those young players in the team, um, some of the uh, top prospects from the academy, because it's th that's one of the advantages in the FA Cup nowadays, to have a look at the future, to look at yeah. the kids coming through and just see if any of them are ever going to make it in the uh, 
for in the Premier League. Mm. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for, and that's what I'll be looking out for tomorrow. Brilliant stuff. Well, just continuing with the football review, uh, we'll take a look at the National League now because Stockport County improved their title chances with a 1 0 victory over Weymouth on Saturday. That was courtesy of a Cameron Murray own goal in the 23rd minute. But, you know, when looks on your side, looks on your side. County now have a six point gap at the top. It's looking good for the Hatters. Yeah, they've certainly got the momentum. Um, I mean, I know a few people there and they do think they're going to make it this year. Um, the other teams seem to be uh, losing the odd point here and there. Yeah. Chesterfield, Wrexham, and it's always best to get the uh, the points in the bank, as they say. Mm. Um, and they, as you say, they're six point clear and odds on now to uh, get themselves back in mm. the Football League. Um, and it, it's good for football in this area because I know Oldham have slipped back into the uh, relegation zone. But under the new manager there, uh, Sheringham, they do seem to be rallying and um, they've given themselves half a chance of getting out of it. So we could end up with uh, another North West team in, in the region in the, in the Football League. Yeah, absolutely. Oldham Athletic held to a draw at Colchester United on Saturday. But just returning to County, they are the favourites. They are 1-4 to four at Betfred to win the title. And then in the division below, the National League North, Curzon Ashton just two points outside the playoffs at the moment. Uh, their game at Alfreton Town on Saturday was postponed due to a waterlogged pitch, but they returned to action on Tuesday night. They made the trip to Telford. Telford 6-4, they're second to bottom. The draw is 12-5, and for Curzon to win the game, that's been priced at 7-5. And chairman Wayne Salkeld feels the club doesn't get enough support on and off the pitch, and this is what he had to say to me on Friday afternoon. I don't think we get enough credit, no. I think that one of the, the, the biggest things for me is, you know, we encourage people to come and watch us. You know, our brand of football is really good in for non-league. Mm. Uh, and I just wish, you know, that we can get as many people coming to the same side stadium as we can. You know, we've got this big push now. Can we get to the playoffs, which will be a dream. Okay. Uh, but can same side Ashton people come and watch us? You know, there's two, there's two clubs in this area. We understand that. I think there's 50,000 people in, in Ashton as alone. You know, come and both support both teams, not just at Curzon, come and yeah. be, support Ashton as well. Well, Curzon Ashton chairman Wayne Salkeld there, understandably a little bit aggravated, you know, a little bit upset about the lack of support at the Tameside Stadium. They've been in this division now for seven seasons, I think. Always the underdogs, underdog, sorry, but always overachieving. Uh, what do you make of their status at the moment? They seem to me that they're always on the threshold of doing something big and they just don't quite make the next step. I think the stadium's fantastic, although it is hard to get to um, and leave for, for sure. <laughs> um, the car park needs um, to be um, expanded big time. But it is an excellent little facility there and um, they are on the threshold of getting into the National League and good luck to them. Yeah, absolutely. If Curzon were to get promoted this season and Oldham Athletic were to get relegated from League 2, that would be a league clash next season. Who would have thought that a decade ago? Well, we're going to move into some Super League news now because Salford Red Devils were beaten at Hull FC. Peter, first of all, where does that leave them in the table and how's that affected the odds? Well... I did think it was a little bit uh, premature to start saying that Salford were going to go and win the Betfred Super League Grand Final. Um, but they had a good start, two uh, victories, and then when they came up against um, an half-decent team in Hull FC, they were, they were beaten and beaten well. Um, the odds have now drifted out to 50-1 to one from 40-1 to one to uh, win the uh, Grand Final. Um, it is looking quite familiar now at the top. We've got Saints, Warrington and Wigan all with maximum points. So um, the Betfred odds to win the grand final in September at Old Trafford. Um, we have Saints, the favourites, six to four. Um, Catalans, nine to two, same price as Warrington and Wigan. So we've got three sides there who are all on equal uh, nine to two to challenge the mighty um, St. Helens. Mm. Um, and I saw them against Wakefield in the flesh and they did look a class above. Um, it's just a matter of time before they won. They look like a team of absolutely giant athletes yeah. compared with Wakefield, who look like, well, let's just say, rugby league players. Yeah, well, there you go then. If you do fancy Saints to retain the grand final crown, they are currently priced with Betfred at 6-4. to four. Now, looking at rugby union side of things, the Six Nations is well underway. Peter, tell us about the, uh, how the odds have shaped up for this one. Well, France are proving themselves to be the uh, team of the moment. 
Um, they're well on top. They've won the three games so far, um, and they're one to three to win the Six Nations this year. Uh, Ireland five to one. Um, England next up at eleven to two. Wales a bit disappointing, sixty six to one. And Scotland who are struggling, um, they're hundred to one. Italy, massive outsiders, 1,000 to 1 with that Fred to uh, win the Six Nations. Not looking good for Italy, but if you do fancy England to win the Six Nations, they are currently priced at Betfred at 11 to 2. Well, if you do fancy a punt on the FA Cup fixture on Tuesday night between Peterborough United and Manchester City, or on any other sports in any other markets, Betfred stores are now open, but you can also bet online via their app.